well today. It's Lauren from Pink Bird Originals. I'm sorry I haven't posted in a while. I had a lot going on. Uh, I was unwell. Jordan ran the London Marathon. Uh, we've had comic conventions, an air conditioning unit fitted in our workshop here. And also the wedding that me and Jordan were supposed to be having in 2025 is now happening in four months time. So yeah, there's been a lot going on. I haven't really had a lot of time to do a YouTube video, but I am carving out a chunk of my day because I really feel the weather is lovely. So it's now or never. I wanted to film a video of how to embroider on a bucket hat. So full disclosure, I haven't embroidered on a bucket hat before and I'm not 100% sure on what I'm doing. I've got one in this like lovely pastel blue, one in like a rose, like dusty kind of pink and one in a khaki. But I've made a couple of designs and I'm going to try and embroider those designs on the hats today. The first thing I did was measure the kind of embroiderable space on the bucket hat so on this particular bucket hat it is three inches tall or about say eight eight centimeters and then i started working on designs that were kind of fit within that space uh, i chose like little wheels dropping out of clouds because i thought that kind of fit nicely with the blue bucket hat kind of color and you can sort of see that this particular design will fit within that space. Initially, because this bucket hat is so unstructured and floppy, I thought I would hoop it up on my standard tubular embroidery frame with just two layers of a heavyweight tearaway stabilizer. And then I do it on the corner of the desk and I'd hoop the hat up over the corner of the desk. But this proved to be more fiddly than I imagined. You can see here I'm kind of struggling to line everything up to get the hat sitting neatly over the round hoop. I do feel like if you're going to persevere and try and hoop up your hat this way, then doing it over the edge of a table might be the best way of doing it. However, for me, because this was such of a fiddly thing to do, I decided to take off my tubular embroidery frame and add on my cap frame instead. The other reason I opted to use my cap frame is because the sewing field will follow the curved shape of the hat, meaning that the fabric will stay in a more natural position rather than me trying to flatten it into the shape of that tubular embroidery frame. The embroidery machine I'm using for this project is the Happy Japan HCS2, which I bought from Midwest Machinery in Manchester. While I do own another embroidery machine which has a larger sewing field on its cap frame, today I decided to use the HCS2 just because that larger embroidery machine was working on a different project. When hooping up your hat, it's important to remember that it does have a sweatband and if that sweatband isn't tucked under the tab on the hat hoop, it may get stitched on when you're doing your embroidery. For today's project, I will be using two layers of a very thick tearaway stabilizer, which I bought from Madeira Threads. I'm tucking that under that tab on my hat frame, and then I'm going to come in and insert the hat over the stabilizer, making sure that the sweat band is also tucked under that tab. Once the hat is roughly in position, the next step is really important. You want to try and make sure that the material is as taut and tight as possible to prevent the hat from moving around as your design is being stitched onto it. On my hat hoop, we have these two metal prongs on either side of the hoop, and these can be used to help you secure your garment in place. I use bulldog clips for this, um, I hold the material really firmly in one hand and then squash the bulldog clip on over that metal prong and this makes sure that the fabric is nice and taut. I only use two bulldog clips, I use one on either side but if you feel that your material is still moving around or not quite as kind of taut as you want it to be 
then I would suggest adding more clips as you feel is necessary. And then I bring the arm of the hat hoop uh, over the bucket hat, following in line with one of the seams or stitches to make sure that the arm is straight. If the arm isn't straight, then it could result in a wonky embroidery. When you clip the strap of the hat hoop into place, it should feel nice and tight. You don't want it to be slack because that could risk the hat moving around when it's embroidering. If the strap of the hat hoop does feel a little bit slack, then there are two screws on the opposite side which you can adjust to make the strap a little bit tighter. Once the hat was securely locked onto the machine, it was time to start stitching out the design. One thing which I forgot to record, but it's also really important, is before I started stitching out the design, I did run a trace to make sure that the design fitted on the fabric area of the hat. Using a hat hoop presents more of a risk than using the normal tubular hoops that are the same size every time. Because a hat hoop has that strap, and because you're kind of responsible for the positioning of that strap, then there is a risk that it could come into contact with the needle if the strap isn't in the proper position. And so it's always better to run a trace and eliminate that risk of the needle coming into contact with that metal strap and potentially knocking the timing of your embroidery machine out of alignment. This design took me about 25 minutes to stitch out. Um, I was actually really surprised. It was a relatively pain-free procedure. Because it was such a floppy fabric, I expected there to be issues with pull compensation that I would then have to go back and address in the digitizing process. I also think the stabilizer worked really well for this project. I know some people think that tearaway stabilizer isn't that strong, but I find this particular stabilizer to be great on all of my embroidery projects, even on clothes and maybe some lighter weight materials that you wouldn't traditionally use a tearaway stabilizer for. Anyway, this design came out really cute. I was so happy with it, and I kind of got the bug for embroidering on bucket hats then because I decided to embroider on the other two straight away. So I swapped the orca colors off my embroidery machine and decided to embroider two different designs on the two remaining bucket hats. Starting with the pink one, and I thought I'd show you how the stabilizer looks inside the bucket hat uh, as I am inserting it onto the embroidery machine. Not long after the design started stitching out, uh, the machine ran out of bobbin thread, and so I had to remove the hat from the machine and replace the bobbin. the completion of that fishy fine art it was time to embroider on the final bucket hat the design for which was inspired by the strawberries I've currently got growing in my back garden. I got more nervous about my ability to digitize four bucket hats with each new design but by some miracle it all turned out okay and here I am introducing my bucket hat to my strawberries. On Instagram I ran a poll to see which of the three designs were people's favorites and uh, strawberries came out on top but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment down below which design is your favourite. So that's it, that's the video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found it helpful in some way. Out of the three bucket hats, let me know which one was your favourite down in the comments. If you'd like to see more of my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. And I also have an Instagram called pink underscore bird underscore originals.com. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.